All right. Hey there, and welcome to another episode of Restored Mind Show. My name is Matt Cotty, and um, in this episode, we are going to be talking about tips for dating when it comes to OCD. And specifically in this episode, I kind of want to offer some generic tips. And then as we continue this series, I'm going to get specific when I'm going to talk about kind of spousal tips and, you know, people with OCD that are dating and, and so on and so forth. So in this first episode, um, the, the thing that I really want to start here with point number one is this idea of having some kind of support, right? Now we need to understand that OCD is a treatable condition, right? And, and it's important to not discriminate on against your partner if they are struggling with OCD or if you have OCD to, you know, I can only date someone with OCD or something like that, right? It, it's, it's just a thing where it's like OCD is a a common disorder, you know, with, with people and it can be treated. Right. And so it's not a defining characteristic of anybody. And, you know, like I look at that for myself, right. It's like, if my wife just like, you know, discriminated against me because I had OCD, you know, it's like, oh, we wouldn't be married. We wouldn't have our, our daughter and, and all that. Right. It's like it, it, because she didn't see it as my defining characteristic. Right. And, um, but it is important to have some kind of support for both partners, right? So if your partner has OCD and you are, you know, the, the other person in the relationship, so to speak, the person who doesn't have OCD, um, it's important for you to have some kind of support to, you know, help you navigate certain situations that might arise, especially if your partner is not getting treatment, right? And because that, that's a, big thing, right? So if the person with OCD is not getting treatment and not getting help and the OCD is getting worse and worse and worse, it's important that you have support. Um, you know, and obviously Restored Minds is a, is a great first place to start with that because, um, you know, we do offer a lot of, a lot of spousal support on our workshops and calls. Um, but the other thing is, is if you have OCD, it's important for you to get support for your partner, right? And for the relationship, right? And because if you aren't, if, if you're just letting the OCD manifest, well, then that's you not taking responsibility, right? We need to understand that while OCD is treatable, it also can become a very big strain and problem and, and a very serious problem for people. And if it's a very serious problem for an individual, it's definitely a problem for the relationship. And it really can manifest different ways based on the specific theme of OCD, right? So if a person has, let's say, contamination OCD, well, they're, they're, they're going to want their spouse to clean everything and they're going to get upset if things aren't clean. And what we need to understand is that's a that's a manifestation of the OCD, not even the person's real wants and desires. It's, it's driven by fear and anxiety, right? And we can obviously understand how that is going to really impact and, and oftentimes damage a relationship. And then if you move on to different subtypes, as we we will in this series, we're going to kind of talk about subtypes and dating, but, um, but it's just really important to have support for both people, right? Um, if you have OCD, get support, get guidance, get, learn the tools that you need to, um, to manage the intrusive thoughts and, and navigate that because it will help your relationship over the long term. And if you are a person and your spouse has OCD, understanding how to support them, right? And that leaves me leads me to point number two, which is really educating yourself on OCD. Now, what we need to understand is OCD kind of has the four main components that I always talk about, right? It's the intrusive thoughts or the, the doubtful what if thought, the feeling, the uncomfortable sensation, right? Usually anxiety could be guilt, doubt, uncertainty, um, and then the compulsive behavior and then the relief. When we understand those components of OCD, we need to understand how they're playing out in your specific relationship. So one of the things that's really important with dating someone with OCD is to make sure that you aren't being a compulsion as the, as the spouse, okay? Um, because oftentimes, we, you know, when we love someone, we want them to be you know, happy, healthy, right? We want them to be okay internally. And people with OCD will often seek a lot of reassurance. And as a significant other, you're often the first place someone goes for that reassurance. Or, you know, if you're a parent, uh, you know, and things like that, that's often another first place. But if you're, if your spouse is asking you questions consistently and you're answering them, and making them feel better temporarily, but it just keeps kind of coming back full circle. We need to understand that that's actually making the OCD worse over the long run, 
And it's really, really important to understand that because if you keep doing it, it's just going to get worse and worse, right? And, and also, if you're struggling with OCD, it's important that you understand what your compulsions are, right? So if you're, if you're doing things that are a- asking your significant other for reassurance and reassurance or, you know, um, not avoiding certain things because it makes you anxious and kind of controlling the relationship, that's not good as well, right? And so education on... OCD and in your specific form of OCD and the compulsive behaviors that you're engaging in or maybe engaging in is, is going to be really important, um, for the long-term health of the individual and the relationship as a whole. And once we understand that we're dealing with OCD, point number three is that we really need to identify if a situation is OCD or not, right? Because the, the the tricky thing is is that relationships are not easy, right? They're probably one of the hardest things um, as humans that we navigate, right? Because not only do we have to learn to manage ourselves, but now we're talking about managing, you know, another person's feelings and thoughts and wants and desires and kind of putting those two things together. And it's um and, and in any relationship, it's it's obviously more complex than just dealing with an individual. So when it comes to OCD, um, if a situation in a relationship is related to OCD, it's important to identify because there obviously is going to be conflict in a relationship. There's just, you know, it's inevitable, right? And and it doesn't necessarily mean that that's a bad thing. What we don't want to do is look at OCD as the cause of everything, right? Because there are obviously situations that are just going to come up that are normal situations. And we don't always want to like, is that your OCD? Or, you know, and always blaming a person's OCD because that that's not fair to the individual that has OCD, right? There are going to be situations that are OCD and that aren't. And and separating those, right? It's, it's important, right? And if we if we know that a situation is OCD, then it's important to address it, right? And and that's where both the individual who has OCD and the partner need to really have that education and awareness on what the intrusive thoughts are that the person's experiencing. So if it is, let's say, contamination related, then if if the situation is around contamination, asking your partner, hey, you know, is this is this part of OCD right now, right? And allowing the person who has OCD to kind of say, you know, like identify it, right? And say, yes, this is, as opposed to just assuming, right? Because like that, that will cause, you know, or, or, you know, historically, um, you know, with, with many of the people that I've worked with, it's a, it's a a sensitive situation, right? Because the person's obviously dealing with something internally, um, you know, with, with mental health. And if you're just assuming that it's part of their mental health and when it's not, it can really, it can really be damaging, um, to the relationship, now, that said, it is important for the individual who has OCD to identify it, right? And if it is OCD, to address it, not to reinforce it. And that's that fine line to walk, right? And so those are just kind of three main tips, right, that I would offer if someone is if someone's dating someone with OCD, right, is to make sure that you have support, right, as, as someone who's dating and also the individual with OCD, because I just think it's something that no one should walk through alone. And again, over at Restored Minds, um, you know, we have some links down below um, that, you know, you can get started on some of those free resources to help you. And then we also have our live workshops as well. So, um, you know, if that's something that you're, you're dealing with, I would really encourage you to check that out. Um, and then also educating yourself on OCD, educating yourself on that cycle and really then then identifying if a situation is or is an OCD and then separating the two is is going to be really important for the relationship and and you know the reality is people with OCD can have successful relationships i know there's you know um people that will say like yeah you know it's just it, it, the, the you know the opposite of that but the reality is is that if we view OCD as a treatable condition and which, you know, it is it, given the right tool set, people can learn to manage thoughts differently, not engage in compulsions and ultimately, you know, create that rewiring effect through neuroplasticity and heal their brain. I mean, it, it really is possible. And if we choose to view it as, as something that's possible to recover from, it doesn't have to be this lifelong 
thing that's going to damage your relationship. But it's up to the individual to take responsibility for that. And it's also up to the spouse to support them on that. And, um, and there's a, there's a dual effect of that. And, you know, like me and my wife, like she is, is very aware of, of, you know, my past struggles with OCD and, you know, we'll have conversations from time to time on, on, you know, like, Hey, you know, like how are things going? And you know, just kind of check-ins. And if, she, you know, if something was coming up, like, you know, we would, we would have open conversation. And so I think open dialogue is important. I don't think, I think it's important not to like sweep it under the rug or like pretend it doesn't exist to have a successful relationship with, with someone with OCD. It's important to be supportive, get support, educate yourselves and identify situations where OCD is actually impacting the relationship and address them head on. And so hopefully, uh, this was, this was helpful as kind of a starting point if, if you are struggling with this. And, um, again, we have some resources down below, um, in the notes to, to help you with this journey. So be sure to check those out. We also really appreciate if you'd take the time to support us by liking and subscribing to our channel and, um, even leaving a comment below. And, um, you know, we're going to continue on this series here and we're going to talk specifics on subtypes of OCD and dating and how that can look look um, for individuals as we move forward in this series. So thank you so much for taking the time to hang out today. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. See you soon. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it helpful, chances are someone else will too. And we'd really appreciate your support by liking and subscribing and also sharing this video on your social platforms. Also, if you're looking for additional help, we have some resources right down in the links below to help you on your journey. Thanks so much for tuning in and I hope to see you soon.